So today I'm going to show you how to do a basic two-port calibration of a VNA. To keep things simple, I'm going to use the short, open, load, and through standards because those are pretty cheap and easy to come by from stores all around. What I'm using for my through is a piece of semi-rigid, high-velocity cable. In another video, we'll show you how to compensate for the fact that we've got a non-zero electrical length for our through. That's because the most common way of doing throughs assume that your through is actually zero length. But for now, let's just get this on there and continue. Now what I like to do is use a torque wrench to maintain a constant repeatable connection between my calibration standards and the ports themselves. So now we can just go over to the software to start this process and tell the software that we've got a through connected between ports one and two. Later, you'll see the standards button. That's where I'll actually compensate for the electrical length of the through and some of the others. But for now, we just click through and say, okay, and we continue. So let's get this off. And what we'll do next is put an open on port one and a load on port two. It's important to have a load on the ports that you're not using because that absorbs the energy transmitted by the VNA out of that port you don't do that, then the energy that would have come out of port two can actually reflect back and mix with the measurement that you're getting on port one and interfere with it. So let's get the open on here. Do my torque wrench. Make that nice and repeatable. Now the open that I'm using here is actually consists of two pieces. So I put the outer, outer barrel on but it also comes with this extra little pin. And this extra pin is actually what makes the open an ideal open and not just an empty connector. And we'll show you more about that at the end. So I push that in there nice and gently just so it makes contact with the pin on the inside of the connector. And then go over and tell the software that I've got an open on port one. Okay, take that off. Now let's get the short on port one. In contrast to the open, the short is pretty straightforward. You just connect the inner pin to the outer pin. And in this case, there's, in this particular short, there's a small open air transmission line of a particular length before that connection takes place. And that's to help the short match the electrical length of the open. Okay, tell the software we've got a short. Now we can move on. So now I'll repeat this open and short process on the second port. I'm saving the load measurements for the end so that I can do them in quick succession and then end with loads on both ports so that I can then probe what the dynamic range of the VNA is after the calibration is complete. So let's get the open on there and the load. Okay, torque wrench. Don't forget the pin. Actually, if you look over here on the graph, S22, you look especially at the higher frequencies, as I push this pin in, you can see the graph change. That's really telling you that you've made contact with the pin, and that's why it's important for the pin to be there. Okay, so we tell software port to open. Now it's time to move on to the short. Take this guy off. On goes the short. Tighten him up. Okay, now, now that we get the short off here, I'm down to the last step of the calibration, which is to do the load measurements. The reason why I'm ending with load load is that the loads will absorb all of the energy coming out of the VNA. And because you're measuring therefore zero, that should make your calibrated VNA display minus infinity on all four of the S parameters. But since you can't actually get down to minus infinity, instead you'll measure the noise floor of the VNA. And that'll tell you the maximum amount of dynamic range that you have available to work with, with your actual measurements that you're interested in. Okay, so click load on two, load on one. 
and there's our initial calibration. So we've got a relatively flat noise floor from minus 60 to minus 80 dB all across our frequency range. That looks pretty good. So let's switch over to the Smith chart now to check out the other calibration standards to make sure that they also give us something that we would expect. So I'm going to switch the display over to one graph to make it a little easier to see. And I'm going to deal with port 2 this time, so I'll set it to S22 and then switch over to Smith chart. Now, right now you can see that there's just a simple dot in the middle of the Smith chart. That's because we still have the loads on both ports. Now, a dot in the middle is mapped to 50 ohms. Remember that circles on the Smith chart are lines of constant resistance, and the center one is mapped to 50. So when we put the open and short on, we expect the dot to move to the right side and to the left side, respectively. So let's do that now. So let me take this load off. And you can see, okay, we were getting a nice uh, arc there because we just have a, a bare connector. So now I'll put the actual calibrated open on, and you'll see that arc condensed down to a nice dot over on the right-hand side of the Smith chart. So that little dot there represents infinite resistance, which is exactly what you would expect for an open circuit. So let's take this off and replace it with a short and show you what that looks like. So get the barrel off here. Now with the short, we expect zero ohms resistance, and that's the outermost circle. So you can see a dot forming over on the left here, and especially after I torque it down, you'll see it collapse nice and good. So good, so that means that our open, short, and loads all give us what we would expect on the Smith chart. So that's a pretty solid calibration. All right, that's it for today. Let's go take some data.